In this video, we're going to look at how to create tables in PowerShell Universal Dashboard. Tables are a great way to show all kinds of data, and uh, dashboards provide you lots of functionality and ways to customize tables, uh, add custom components, explainable rows, export data, filter and search, page, and sort all the data inside your tables. Let's first look at an example of a basic table without really any customization. So I have an array of data here, and I have these five hash tables of various desserts. And we're actually just going to pass that data directly to new UD table. And what new UD table is going to do is it's going to look at this object or each one of the hash tables and then determine uh, which columns we should display in our table. So it actually looks at the first row to determine uh, pretty much the columns for the rest of the rows. So whatever is in your first row or object is what will end up in the first row and specify the columns for this table. So if we actually go over to our dashboard, you can see that it's created this table. The header at the top are the uh, property names, followed by the values for each one of the objects that we pass to the data um, row. So as you can see, we have frozen yogurt, which comes from this part of the hash table here. We have calories of 159, which come in here. So that's how you create a basic table with data without having to configure any columns. Now let's take a look at what it looks like when you actually configure the columns for a table. So I'm using the same uh, data array of these five hash tables of desserts, but now I'm actually specifying five columns that I want to use for my table. Columns have lots and lots of properties. Um, kind of the, the big ones that you're gonna be using uh, right off the bat are property and title. So a property is what matches the object. So in this case, I want to match this column with the dessert property or er, property of the hash table. Uh, and then I want to actually change the title from dessert, which would be the default if you didn't specify any columns, to a dessert. Then we pass the columns into our new UD table, and it'll actually create a table using these configured columns. So now when we look at our uh, dashboard, you'll see that our first column is actually a dessert rather than the dessert property. So it allows you to customize uh, the title in this regard. So there are lots and lots of features that we're going to get into now. The most common feature that you'll be using when you're customizing tables is typically the render function. So with the render function, it allows you to put whatever you'd like inside that column. So this can be buttons, customized text, uh, other actions, that kind of thing. So in this example, what I'm actually doing is I'm going to create a button based on the dessert row. So this gets called for every single row, and that's what actually shows up inside the column. So if we actually come over to our dashboard, you'll see that I have a click for dessert button instead of the text of the dessert. If I click that, you'll see that in the top right here, the frozen yogurt uh, dessert is shown in a toast. So if I just click these different ones, it's going to show the different values for uh, those desserts. And the way this works is we call render, and then you're going to notice that I'm using this event data variable in each, each one of the render methods. And event data is kind of a common uh, variable that we use throughout uh, Universal Dashboard. But in this case, event data is the row uh, that we are rendering. So you can think of that uh, this render method is being called for each row, and each one of these rows is listed up here in the data. So when I call event data dessert it's actually going to use this value here, which is the frozen yogurt for the first dessert, and that's going to be the button ID. Additionally, we're passing that into the onClick method of the button to show that toast. So I am then saying event data dessert. For example, if we wanted to adjust this to use that event data variable to say something besides this text here, we could then say event data dot dessert, save this, It'll update our dashboard automatically, and now you'll see that the button text is actually the dessert itself, and clicking it has the same effect. So you can actually put any components you want inside a column. Uh, you do need to be a little careful of formatting and that kind of thing, because you have to um, kind of work within the constraints of a column here. But it allows you to kind of have rows that either have formatting with icons or um, additional actions that you can take. You can kind of think of like restarting a service or starting a process, deleting a record from somewhere. Um, or you could have just, you know, icons that display status. So you could use new UD icon to potentially show a different value um, depending on the fat content, for example.
So again, it kind of works the same way where we've created the columns and then we've just passed in the data and the columns into the UD table and it produces a table that has actions that we can take inside the dessert column. Another option for tables is the ability to actually create paginated tables. So if you had a table or a set of data such as this where I have a hundred items and I'm just creating a hundred hash tables and each one of those hash tables has kind of the row ID inside the hash table. If we view our dashboard, that looks kind of messy because we have 100 items, and you have to scroll all the way down to the bottom to see all of them. So you can imagine computers or users in your environment, that kind of thing could be a very large table. To kind of alleviate this issue, what you can actually do is use the show pagination uh, flag on new UD table. If we save that, what that's going to do is actually default us to have this five rows per page setting. and we can actually page through the items inside our table. We click this button here, it's gonna go all the way to the end or all the way to the beginning. You can also change the page size to show that many pages of it or that many items per page um, rather than the default five per page. So it just kind of gives you a better experience or the user experience while working with um, a table of large sets of data. Another common set of features for tables is the ability to sort a table. So sorting um, kind of works based on strings. Um, you can change the data type so it sorts differently, but in this case, it's just gonna sort all these items in this row as strings. All I have to do is turn on the show sort switch parameter on new UD table. And now when I view my table, you'll see that I have this little arrow here that actually has three different states. It has unsorted, which is it is now. Uh, it has sorted, um, ascending, and then sorted descending. So um, you can kind of configure lots of things. You can decide which columns actually can sort and that kind of thing using new UD table column. You can also set things like the default um, direction things, sort, and um, you can also select the column that is sorted by default uh, when you set up a table. So in this case, it's a real simple example of just kind of turning on sorting for your table. Another handy feature of tables is the ability to specify filters. So filters allow you to uh, filter a particular column based on some criteria. So there's several different filter types. By default, the filter is a, um, a, a search. So you could actually type things in here to look for particular items. Um, you can also do things with numbers such as range. So if I were to specify the range filter, you'll see I get a slider here and I can actually adjust the slider values. Um, there are filters for things like autocomplete, which will actually um, use the values of the table to provide you a drop-down list. This can be useful for states and that kind of thing, um, where you want to like select something and filter by that. There are date-time filters and um, lots of options that you can kind of put for your filter. And the way that we do this is by specifying columns and then specifying that we want a particular column to be able to be filtered and we use the dash filter um, parameter to do that. Uh, by default, if you did not specify the filter type, then it is just gonna be a search filter. So you kind of search the actual text values inside that column, but you can also specify filter types for things like autocomplete and range. Another useful setting is the ability to actually search all the rows and columns in the table. So unlike filters where you actually call or sort, sorry, filter a, an individual column, you're actually going to be searching all the columns for a particular value. So this is just kind of a string search. And you can see here, I have a bunch of numbers again. And if I were to type into the search functionality, it's actually gonna go through and find the values in the table and search the table for those. Um, that is just accomplished by using the show search uh, switch parameter on new UD table. Another useful feature of tables is the ability to create expandable rows or collapsible rows, however you want to say it. Um, and the idea with a uh, expandable row is that each one of your rows will have a little button that can actually expand and show more information about the thing that you're looking at. So in this example, what I actually have is get UD service, and I'm just passing that to a new UD table here. Uh, from there, I'm actually creating a couple columns. I'm creating a name and a status column. And if we actually go look at my table, you'll see that I have a name and a status with the information about the services on my machine. Um, additionally, you'll see this little drop down here. When I click that, it's actually going to give the display name of the service. So if I were to just kind of click through these, you can kind of see the display name of these services. 
And the way that's accomplished is by using this on row expand event handler. So every time one of those rows is expanded, it's gonna call this particular uh, script block. And this script block is gonna receive the event data value again. And this value is the current row that is being expanded. Since each row has a display name property, what we're gonna do is put it into another component. So for example, I'm using new ED alert here to uh, put the display name. And that's why we end up with this little green checkbox and a green background, because I'm using the standard new UD alert. You can put any component you want in this row expand um, script block here. Uh, so I've seen users use other tables to display even more information. You can kind of think of maybe virtual machines. And then when you expand it, it has information like um, the network adapters that are currently configured for that virtual machine. So the row expand provides like another place to put additional information without having to navigate away from the current page when you're using a table. An additional useful feature is the ability to export data from a table. So in this example, what I'm doing is I'm using get service again to populate a data array of services on my machine. Then I'm creating uh, several columns. I'm creating um, a service name column, a status column, startup type, and start type. Then I'm passing all those values to new UD table. Data goes into the data parameter, columns parameter, we're setting a title, and then we're adding an export button. So you'll see this export flag here. I'm also adding include uh, in export to new UD table and column. If you don't do that, it's not gonna export anything because it just assumes that you don't wanna export those particular columns. So in this example, I'm just gonna be exporting the service name and the start type. So if I save that, go over to my dashboard, you'll see that my dashboard has my service name, my status, my start startup type, and my start type. Uh, if I were to click this button here, you'll see you have a lot of different options for exporting. So you can export by CSV, um, you can support by an Excel sheet, uh, PDF, and JSON. Um, you can also export the like every single row or just the current page of rows. So if you were to do some filtering or paging, um, you would use that export current view and it would only show you what you've selected. So I'm gonna click export all as CSV and I get this services1.csv. If I click that, you'll see that inside here, I have the columns that I said include and export. So I have my service name and um, my start type columns. So there's lots of different ways you can customize exporting. You can hide different values here um, for the exporting. You can hide that file name selector, that kind of thing. Um, and you can also change the text of all this. So the entire table itself is um, localizable with your own custom text strings. And we'll actually cover that in the uh, advanced set or lecture for uh, power, or partial universal dashboard tables. The final basic feature I wanna show off is the ability to create tables that allow you to select rows inside the table and then kind of use them wherever you'd like. So you can see here kind of how this looks is I have my services table again, it has my various columns, but on the left-hand side, we have this little checkbox that we can check um, that will allow us to select items inside our table. And as you can see up here, I'm kind of getting this pop-up that shows me some information about the columns that I'm selecting inside my table. So how this is accomplished is that we actually create uh, our data array again. In this case, we're calling get service, populating it with data. Uh, I'm just setting up my standard columns again. Uh, I'm not doing anything fancy there. And then in new UD table, I'm turning on a couple things. First of all, I'm using show selection. So that's what will actually show the checkboxes on the left-hand side here. If you turn it on but don't do anything with it, it's not really gonna have any effect. Um, but you can also turn on on row selection. So this is called every single time a row is selected. So what's interesting with this is that when you say on row selection, the event data property is actually gonna be the row that was selected. Um, and if I were to click one of these rows, you're gonna see the output here in outstring. It's a little garbled because of, um, it's using PowerShell 7 and those are ANSI escape characters, but this is the actual service that was selected. Additionally, you can use the select all button to select all the services. And you'll see that in there, selected all is true. So it's actually saying that like pretty much every row was selected. If I toggle it off, it's gonna say that all were selected false. So um, it pretty much indicates to you whether or not all items are selected or none of the items are selected. So you can kind of do what you'd like inside on row selection. The other thing that you can do is you can actually access the selected rows outside of the table. So 
we're going to have another video on this, but this is the, uh, using get UD element to get the current state of the table. So this button is actually outside the table completely. And when I call new UD or when I call it get UD element and specify the service table, it's actually trying to get the state of this particular element here. So I get called get UD element. I'm storing that value into a variable here. And then I'm getting the selected rows out of that uh, state that we got from get UD element. And then I'll just show it in a toast similar to what we're doing when we're, we're calling um, on row selection. So I'm going to select this and we get this little pop up that says which item is selected. If I scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see I have my get rows button. When I click that, we're going to get a similar pop up because it is going to show uh, which item is selected based on um, the get UD value here. So that is the selected row value coming from get UD element. So uh, in this video, we looked at the various basic features that you can enable for PowerShell Universal Dashboard Tables. We're going to have an advanced video that you can view that allows you to load um, data server side and process things in SQL tables efficiently without loading everything into the client side. So uh, stay tuned for that video. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment.